All right. So uh, thank you again, uh, Obed, for giving me this opportunity to present on the book of Daniel on behalf of Tribe Alithea. So uh, I'm excited and I hope you guys are too. <laughs> okay, let's go. Wait lang. Oh my gosh, I'm experiencing technical difficulties. Ayan, okay, sorry. All right, so introduction. An earthquake shakes the foundation of our security. A tornado blows away a lifetime of treasures. An assassin's bullet changes national history. A drunk driver claims an innocent victim. A divorce shatters a home. Terrorism frightens a nation. International and personal tragedies make our world seem a fearful place, overflowing with evil and seemingly out of control. And the litany of bombings, coups, murders, and natural disasters can cause us to think that God is absent or impotent. Where is God, we cry, engulfed by sorrow and despair. 25 years ago, Daniel could have despaired. He and thousands of his countrymen have been deported to a foreign land after Judah was conquered. Daniel found himself facing an egocentric despot and surrounded by idolaters. So here we have the destruction of the temple painted in uh, the late 1800s. Instead of giving in or giving up, this courageous young man held fast to his faith in God. Daniel knew that despite the circumstances, God was sovereign and working out his plan for nations and individuals. The book of Daniel centers around this profound truth, the sovereignty of God. So we, here we have exiles um, making their way out of Judah. Okay, overview and background content. So Daniel is a series of stories about how God brings honor to himself through Daniel and his three friends in Babylon, followed by four apocalyptic visions about future kingdoms and God's final kingdom. Uh, Daniel, one of the early exiles to Babylon who was selected to serve as a provincial administrator in the Babylonian and finally Persian court. Okay. So date of composition, it's unknown, presumably toward the end of the 6th century BC, although some might have suggested it dates from the early 2nd century BC. So there are three emphasis in the book of Daniel. Uh, first is God's sovereignty over all the nations and the rulers. Second is God's care for Jews in exile with promises of final restoration. Third, God's present overruling of final overruling and final victory over human evil. The book of Daniel comes in two clear parts. Uh, there's chapters 1 to 6 and chapters 7 to 12. So it's an equal split between the two. Okay. Chapters 1 to 6 contains court stories mostly about Daniel and his three friends who remain absolutely loyal to Yahweh while rising, even while rising to positions of importance within the Babylonian Empire. So here on the left, we have that, uh, that story of Daniel and his three friends in uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refusing to eat non-kosher foods. So instead, they ask for water and vegetables, and they ate that for 10 days. Okay. Uh, emphasis are on four. Uh, on the four Hebrews' loyalty to God, on God's miraculous deliverances of them. So, na discuss na natin yung um, how out of faith they chose to eat uh, uh, vegetables and water instead of the defiling food that the Babylonians would serve their their officials. So, so there's that. Um, so. The, other, the next part is the miraculous deliverances of them. So later we'll tackle that. Um, on gentle kings acknowledging the greatness of Israel's God. On Daniel as the God-gifted interpreter of dreams, all of which emphasize God's sovereignty over all things, including the king who conquered and destroyed Jerusalem. Okay, now we're at uh, chapter 7 to 12. Part 2 is a series of apocalyptic visions about the rise and fall of succeeding empires, 
in each case involving a coming tyrannical ruler, most often understood to be Antiochus the Fourth or Epiphanes, or of the Seleucid rulers of Palestine, who, because of his desolation of Jerusalem and sacrilege of the temple, was to become the first in a series of Antichrist figures in Jewish and Christian literature. But in each case, the final focus is on God's judgment of the enemy and the glorious future kingdom awaiting his people. Uh, here on the right nga pala, we have that, uh, that statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about. So the statue had the head of gold, arms of silver, uh, torso of bronze, and I believe feet of uh, thighs of iron, I think. That was feet of clay and iron mixed together. So authorship and date. The book identifies the author as Daniel. And to add to that, Jesus attributed it to Daniel as well. Uh, as you can see in Matthew 24, verse 15. So that means he recognizes him as the author. Okay. Daniel was among the first Jews carried off to Babylon in 605 BC. So Jewish captives were taken to Babylon in three stages. In 605 BC, 597 BC, and 586 BC, where Jerusalem was destroyed. Daniel was probably written approximately 536 BC or between 536 and 530 BC, shortly after Cyrus had captured Babylon in 539 BC and recorded events from that, that occurred from the time of his exile in 605 BC until 536 BC, the third year of King Cyrus. Authorship and date. Okay, so who were the original readers? So Daniel wrote to his fellow Jewish exiles in Babylon to remind them of God's sovereign control over world history and to encourage them with God's promises of restoration. So here on the right, we have um, fragments of the, the scroll of Daniel in Aramaic. Uh, I think this was part of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Historical setting. Daniel had been taken captive and deported to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar in 605 BC. There, he served in the government for about 70 years during the reigns of Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Darius, and Cyrus. So Daniel served under four different rulers. And that's how trustworthy he was. So here's the timeline. Um, 605 BC, prophetic ministry of Daniel begins. 586 BC uh, came the fall of Judah. 538 BC, the decree of Cyrus and end of exile. 522 BC, the reign of Darius begins. Um, to continue, um, there's the historical setting or the Babylon of the Babylonian Empire. Though their empire was short-lived by comparison as the, with the Assyrians before them and the Persians after them, the Babylonians dominated the Near East during the early days of Daniel, and they were responsible for his initial exile to Babylon. Daniel himself, however, outlived the Babylonian Empire, which fell to the Persians in 538 BC. So on the right, we have Babylonian art. I think it's a mural. So, galing na musik. Tanang. Okay. Structure. Uh, the, uh, as we discussed earlier, the book of Daniel is made up of two halves, each of which has its own literary style. So, here's the map nga pala. Okay. So, chapters 1 to 6, Daniel and his three friends at the Babylonian court. The first half contains stories from the lives of Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They show how God's people should live in a world that is not their home. The second half of the book of Daniel contains apocalyptic visions. They are designed to reassure God's people that in spite of their present persecution and suffering, God is in control and will ultimately be victorious. 
So here's another outline. As you can see, it's more detailed. Uh, number one, the captivity, faithfulness, and elevation of Daniel and his three friends. So number two, uh, the destinies of the nations. That's chapter two to seven. First, we have Nebuchadnezzar's dream of a statue. So kung nakita mo yung uh, earlier slides, he had a dream of uh, this statue uh, that had a golden head, um, silver arms, um, bronze thighs, and uh, iron feet mixed with clay. So that represents different kingdoms. So yung gold, yung gold head represents Babylon. Yung silver arms represents uh, the Medo-Persian Empire. Um, the next is the, uh, I think it was the, I think it was the Roman Empire. And then anyway, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's golden image and its worship. So in response to his dream, he created a, a golden statue and, um, and decreed that everyone in, in Babylon would worship the statue. Pero Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to the statue. They were thrown into a, into a fire, and, but they made it out alive. So, and there was a fourth person in the fire. So maybe we'll be discussing that in the next week. And then next is Nebuchadnezzar's vision of a large tree, uh, which represented him. And then the, the tree was cut off if I recall correctly. So next is Belshazzar's and, and Babylon's downfall. Um, this, is, this is the chapter where um, may nakitang writing on the wall si Belshazzar. And, and that spelled out the demise of that kingdom before um, napunta yung reign sa, sa Persians. Okay. Um, next is Daniel's deliverance from the lion's den, which is Chapter 6, where Darius is king. That's a very well-known story. Um, yun yung pinaka-alam ng mga Sunday school kids. And this, this was one of my favorite stories then growing up. Okay. And then there's Daniel's uh, dream of the four beasts, which also represent different kingdoms, similar to yung uh, statue dream ni Nebuchadnezzar. Next is Israel's destiny. That's chapters 8 to 12. There's Daniel's vision of a ram and goat. Um, that's chapter 8. Daniel's prayer and vision of the 77s. That's chapter 9. And Daniel's vision of Israel's future, which are tackled in chapters 10 to 12. So what's the purpose of the book of Daniel? It's to give a historical account of the faithful Jews who lived in captivity. And it is to show how God is in control of heaven and earth, directing the forces of nature, the destiny of nations, and the care of his people. Uh, unique features. <clears throat> Daniel's apocalyptic visions in chapters 7 to 12 give a glimpse of God's plan for the ages, including a direct prediction of the Messiah. Special advice in reading. In the Hebrew Bible, Daniel is included among the writings rather than the prophets. In this, in part, this was due to its genre, stories about the prophet and apocalyptic visions rather than prophetic oracles. Nothing else like Daniel in, in Jewish and Christian literature. Combination of court stories and apocalyptic visions. Its intent is to inspire and encourage God's people living under foreign domination, not to call them to repent in light of coming judgments. Daniel is thus never called a prophet, but one to whom God reveals mysteries. And it might be, help, it might be helpful for you to know, uh, to review the brief description of the apocalyptic. So, since the dreams and visions in chapters 2, and 7 to 12 have the most have most of the features of the apocalyptic. So one, this book was born in a time of oppression. Two, it's a literary work altogether. Three, comes by the means of visions and dreams that are given by angels. Four, the images are those of fantasy symbolizing reality. 
Number five, Daniel is told to seal up the visions for the last days. Chapters 1 and 8 and 1 and 8 to 12 are in Hebrew. Chapters 2 to 7 are in Aramaic. If I'm not mistaken, this is the only book that I know of in the Bible that, that is written in two different languages. So what is Aramaic? Aramaic is the lingua franca of the Near East from the 6th century onward through the time of Christ. Why is this important? Aramaic portion consists of the stories plus the first vision, suggesting that these are open reading for all, but the introduction and the interpreted visions are in Hebrew, implying perhaps that they are for God's people only. The Aramaic portion is arranged in a chiastic pattern. Did I read it right? Okay. Chapters 2 and 7 contain similar visions of future kingdoms ending with God's final and eternal kingdom. Chapters 3 and 6 are stories of miraculous deliverance where opposition has been directed against God. Chapters 4 and 5 are stories about the demise of two Babylonian kings who both acknowledge the greatness of Israel's God. So this is the key verse from Daniel. He, God, reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I think it's, this is in context of uh, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, I think. Mega themes. God is in control. So God is all-knowing, and he is in charge of world events. God overrules and removes rebellious leaders who defy him. God will overcome evil. Evil, No one is exempt, but he will deliver the faithful and those who, found, who, and those who follow him. Although nations vie for world control now, one day Christ's kingdom will replace and surpass the kingdoms of this world. Our faith is sure because God... Because our future is secure in Christ. We must have courage and put our faith in God who controls everything. Purpose in life. Daniel and his three friends are examples of dedication and commitment. They determined to serve God regardless of the consequences. They did not give in to pressures from an ungodly society because they had a clear purpose in life. It is wise to make trusting and obeying God alone, our true purpose in life. This will give us direction and peace in spite of the circumstances or consequences. We should disobey anyone who asks us to disobey God. Our first allegiance must be to God. Next, perseverance. Daniel served for 70 years in a foreign land that was hostile to God Yet he did not compromise his faith in God. He was trustful, persistent in prayer, and disinterested in power for personal glory. So in order to fulfill your life's purpose, you need staying power. Don't let your Christian distinctness become blurred. Be relentless in your prayers, maintain your integrity, and be content to serve God wherever he puts you. God's Faithfulness God was faithful in Daniel's life. He delivered him from execution, from a den of lions, and from enemies who hated him. God cares for his people and deals patiently with them. We can trust God to be with us through any trial. Because he has been faithful to us, we should remain faithful to him. Theology so the primary focus of the book of Daniel is the absolute sovereignty of God. Jerusalem may be destroyed with its temple in ruins, God's people may be in exile, and wicked rulers may seem triumphant, but, God's, but God remains supreme. God is greater than all circumstances, and his people should be true to him in whatever situation they find themselves. The truth of God's sovereignty sovereignty should comfort his people during periods of persecution and indeed one of the primary purposes of Daniel is to encourage God's people to trust in the Lord who directs history and who whose will cannot be thwarted 
Daniel also urges his readers to his readers to look beyond the horizon of their current circumstances, beyond Babylon, um, Antiochus the Fourth, Epiphanes, or Rome to the coming of Christ, the one whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. It is Christ who, according to the purposes of God, will ultimately liberate his people, destroy all human kingdoms, and establish his eternal kingdom of righteousness and peace. So here's the theology through Jesus' lens. One of Jesus' favorite terms for himself was son of man, a term that combines the idea of mere humanity, as is evident from its use in the book of Daniel, with the overtones of the divine and exalted son of man in Daniel 7 verse 13. This human figure bears the mark of bears the marks of deity in that he comes in the clouds a sign of of deity throughout the near the ancient near east and receives the right to exercise judgment over all kingdoms and nations in daniel 7 the son of man is connected with the saints who suffer faithfully in the face of persecution just as jesus himself suffered faithfully for his people um, to continue in Luke 20, verse 18, which com combines Daniel 2, verse 34, 35, with Isaiah 8, verses 14 and 15. Jesus is identified as the stone that crushes all previous world empires, replacing them with his own unending kingdom. Now, if you recall yung dream ni Nebuchadnezzar uh, of the statue made up of different materials so he he dreamt that up and then um later on in the dream he saw a stone come comes rolling down and then crushing the the feet and breaks which which then breaks up the statue into different parts so that is what the stone represents uh see jesus so reflections our role our role models that we can read from the book of Daniel. So number one is of course see Daniel. So he, um, as we read through his story, we will see that Daniel is a man of convictions and prayer who obeyed God at any cost. So we should ask ourselves: um, Do we engage in daily prayer? Because I see Daniel. Um, he would persist in praying even if it was made illegal under under Cyrus if, if I'm not mistaken even if it was even if it was made illegal he still opened his windows and prayed for everyone to see that was how determined he was to engage in daily prayer and not even in secret he he made it public for everyone to see and kaya siya natapon sa lion's den uh, next, do you have integrity? And number three, what is your reputation among your friends, family, and co-workers? So those are some questions that we can think about in, in the light of the figure of Daniel. Next, see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Targeted by prejudice and, pre and envious colleagues, and thrown into a fiery furnace because they refused to worship an idol at the king's command, as mentioned earlier. So um, God ultimately delivered them and rewarded them and received praise from a pagan king and all the people because they were saved from that then, uh, from that fiery furnace. Um, they recognized ni Nebuchadnezzar that God is the true God. So or God is a powerful God. So we should ask ourselves, are you willing, are we willing to stand up for God even if our actions mean discomfort or even death? I think that is something that um that we don't really think about too often because we we live in a major privileged country. We don't live in the nations that are where Christians are persecuted like in pinagpray natin like like Libya earlier. Okay. 
Uh, so here are the challenges that we can reflect on. If you achieve success from the world standpoint, hold firmly to your integrity and godly principles. In times of crisis, seek God's direction through prayer. And when God gives you a gift or ability, remember to give him the credit and humbly complete your service. Number four, take to heart the truth that those who walk in pride, God is able to humble. I think this is referring to the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had of the tree and then the tree was cut and then or it fell. Tapos, um, at, at some point in that chapter, kasi, he was looking at his kingdoms and he was telling himself that he achieved all this and what happened to him. Um, he, he went crazy for seven years until he finally acknowledged that God is God and saka lang siya na restore. Number five, when God seems not to hear your prayers, remember that a spiritual battle may be raging. Be patient and trust him. Number six, ask God to build your faith so that you too can respond with quiet confidence that your God is able to save you in any circumstance. Are you willing, if necessary, to commit an act of civil disobedience and face the consequences whether or not God rescues you? So um, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Yay. So those are the references and these are some of the images that were used to create this presentation. Thank you.